Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. On this week's topic, I'm going to be talking about creating handles to modify surfaces. So let's take a look. So you can see here I have a surface that kind of um, bends in multiple different directions. Uh, we can almost think of this like maybe the start of a bicycle seat or something. And um, I want to kind of change the overall shape of this. And to do that, I have to go into my sketch and uh, move these points around. And if I click on one of these points, you can see I get this tangency handle. And that actually allows me to change the tangency weight and the tangency direction. However, I don't have that capability here in 3D. So if I turn on my sketch, I can click on that point and you'll notice I don't get the handle. All I can do is maybe move the point around and I get an update, but I can't control the weight. And I want to be able to do that. So here's the tip I wanted to share. We're gonna create our own handles. So I'm gonna go back and edit this sketch. And for example, let's just start with this point here. If I click on that spline point, I can see the handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a line like so. It doesn't matter what size or anything like that. And what we're gonna basically do is trace over this existing tangency handle. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make them collinear. So I'll say this line and this line are collinear with each other. And you can now see they're in line. And if I move this line, this line is moving also. So then the next thing I'm going to do is basically connect the points. So I'll say coincident this bottom point with that bottom point this top point with this top point. So we basically just traced over that. Now here's the magic. When I come back into 3D, you can see because our sketch is being displayed, I can see this handle and it's collinear and coincident with the tangency handle. So if I pull on these points, you can kind of see how I can control the width or the tangency of that point, and then I can also control the direction. So let me just kind of push that in a little bit. Let's look at it from this direction. Maybe we grab this point and move it around, grab that tangency handle, and let's just widen this a little bit. So I have a lot more control, and I can visually see what is happening to the patch or the surface patch. So let me go back in and just show how quickly uh, you can do this. I'll, I'll just add a couple lines in here, um, kind of close to these other points, like so. Again, doesn't matter the length or the direction or anything like that. Then I can come in and select, for example, this um, spline point, and I want that to be collinear with that, so they're in line with each other. And then I'll say coincident, that point there, that point there, that point there, and that point there. And it's really kind of like that quick. So it does take a little bit of time to do the setup, um, but it gives you a lot of control down the road. Now you might be asking, how come I'm making them collinear instead of just using coincident? Um, I've actually had better luck having them be collinear first. Um, here's an example where they're not. I'm just going to say coincident. I'll say I want that point and that point to be coincident. And you'll notice that they really aren't. And that's, again, because this is kind of a representation. So I'm going to undo that. Let's go ahead and select this line again. I'll say collinear. So that is collinear with that. And then all I have to do is make them coincident. And these are actually pretty close. So I'll just do uh, those two points um, to be collinear, or I'm um, sorry, coincident. And then I'll say that point and that point to be coincident, like so. Okay, uh, and again, I'll just really quickly kind of go around. Collinear actually was pretty close in that one. They almost look parallel. And let's go ahead and coincident those two together. 
these two are already pretty close, so I'll say that point and that point. And sometimes it helps to um, move the point out a little bit just to kind of see it better. And I can say uh, coincident and do that. And now you can see they're in line with each other. So one more and then we'll be done. So I'll say collinear this and this coincident. Okay. So what this is going to allow me to do is I now have control of all of the spline points uh, on on the uh, surface patch. So you can kind of see here, for example, I can grab this point, move it around, change the uh, tangency weight. Oops, let me make sure I grab that point. So I can change the weight of it to kind of, you know, round over or square, I should say, this edge here. Same thing um, with this line. I'll go ahead and click on that guy, bring that forward, and I can really have a lot of control over what I want um, these to look like. So I'll do the same thing here and the same thing here. And again, I like this because it's a it's a visual representation of what's um, what the patch looks like instead of going into um, the sketch every single time to do, to try and get the surface. Um, you can also do this for like, you know, surface revolves um, where I have here kind of like a, a wine glass and a revolve here. So let's go into surface revolve. So this is my profile and that's the axis. Um, and you can kind of see what that looks like. I do have control if I turn on my sketch, I can see these points and I can move the points around. But once again, I can't you know, change the tangency or anything like that. So just like before, I'll come in and draw a couple quick lines. Then all I have to do is select the point, select that green tangency line, make those collinear with each other, and connect, basically connect the dots. So that point and that point, and then that point and that point. Okay, so let's do that one, collinear. Kind of a rinse and repeat in this example. Um, so I want to make sure I grab that white dot because that's the open end. And let's just go with that. Um, I'll say finish sketch. Um, I didn't do this last line, um, and you'll notice I can move it, but it doesn't do anything. However, if I grab this, I, I can make changes, you know, bring that point in there. Um, same thing with this line here. I can grab the line to move it, or I can grab the end point to change, like, the direction and the tangency weight of this um, spline point. So I just changed the weight there. Let's go ahead and change the weight here. I'll make that a little bit smaller. And you can kind of see how it's giving me a sharper um, result. And again, I'm not having to come in and edit my sketch over and over again, you know, making a quick change like, like so, and then finish my sketch, see what it looks like, and go back into my sketch. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up and share or repost the video with others in your network. This will help spread the knowledge of Fusion out to the community. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, please reach out to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.